Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today I'd like to review with you guys how I utilize navies in Hearts of Iron 4. So I've gotten a lot of comments uh, requesting this video uh, and it's just going to be a very basic guide that describes how I utilize navies and it will also review some basic concepts that you need to know in terms of your navy setup and um, how you go about organizing your navy and utilizing the navy. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to discuss with you guys is the navy task force compositions. And as you can see, I have three task forces here. And uh, we have a fast task force, a slow task force, and a submarine task force. And then the submarine task force is then broken down into a fast subsection and a slow subsection. My theory behind grouping all the, the naval speeds together is that the fleet will move as one and you're going to have optimized your best fleet and your, your slower fleet with the older ships can be utilized in other ways to do more convoy escort missions and things of that nature. So you're gonna have two different fleets for two different purposes. Typically the faster fleet is more of an ocean going fleet. It has longer ranges. It has newer uh, battle cruisers and battleships. Typically uh, can go longer distances while the older fleet is more utilized uh, near the coast and to do slower types of missions. Something that should be said about the submarines is they're pretty much only useful for convoy raiding. They're incredibly slow naval vessels. The one thing to remember is that if you convoy raid in a section where you have an amphibious assault planned, it does give you naval supremacy. It is an important tool that you can utilize if you need more naval supremacy. You could just take the subs out, since they're only good at convoy raiding, put them in the area where you need to trigger your amphibious assault, and then uh, that'll add to your naval supremacy. So that's a good point right there. The other way I organize the task forces is with the different admirals. I give the faster, newer task force a better admiral and the slower one like the second best admiral and of course the sub task force gets the sea wolf if there is a sea wolf in your admiralty of your nation another rule of thumb is that anything that is a heavy cruiser and above should kind of be considered an extremely valuable ship and uh, should be protected with four screens so we're just going to call that the rule of four anything below heavy cruiser is going to be considered a screen that inc includes light cruisers and destroyers and there's also a couple other ship types that uh, germany doesn't possess but anything on this list here that's below heavy cruiser so just put the screens in with your task forces so here we have uh, three heavy cruisers protected by 14 destroyers. So we have more than enough screens and those are light cruisers right there. So that's like 20 screens for three kind of battleship type class ships. And then here we have three heavier ships with 10 screens. So I would need to probably shift a couple of the destroyers from this navy over to this navy to min-max this navy build. I would say that the best types of fleets are definitely carrier fleets. Germany does not start off the game as uh, having possessing carriers, so it is quite hard for other nations to morph into a carrier style of navy. And uh, Japan is a navy, for, for instance, that starts off with carriers and starts off with modern carrier fighters and tactical bombers. And so it's easy if you start like that from the beginning of the game. Okay, and France also have carriers from the beginning of the game. But if you're a nation like Germany, it's going to be incredibly hard to develop the carrier tactics. It does take up quite a few research slots. It does take a long time to build an aircraft carrier and all the airplanes to put on the carrier. So that being said, it's nice if you have it. If you don't have it, it's incredibly hard to kind of fit the round peg into the square hole. See what you have in terms of your research. See what you have in hand at the beginning of the game and build out your navy from there and try to use the organization that I described to you. 
One last concept that I'd like to review with you is that I don't typically choose decisive battle expert if you have one available to you in the country that you're playing with because that capital ship attack and the screen attack in defense tends to incite a decisive battle. You do not want a decisive battle. You want your Navy to hit and run and to stay alive for another day. Another way that you can achieve this is by using Concealment Expert and Smokescreen Specialist on your Admirals. So Concealment Expert gives, negates 20% uh, of the visibility of your opponent, and Smokescreen Specialist gives you a 25% uh, chance of retreating. So that is great if all you want your Navy to do is aid in amphibious assault so that they're not getting into a major clash and you're not losing all of your major ships. It's okay, you can rebuild screens, but it's incredibly hard uh, to rebuild heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, and battleships. So that's about it there. As you can see here, I'm about to go invade the United States. So I need to get uh, naval superiority over here. We'll figure that out later on the live stream. But please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Please leave me questions down below uh, about anything to Navy, to other aspects of the game. And I'll see you on the next one.